Yo, YouTube, what up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into the Quad Deca album review. If this is your first time here, or if this is not your first time here, I'm prefacing this video for a reason. This video is going to be the longest on the channel at over an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, the timestamps will be in the bottom per song and final thoughts, the whole thing. But I wanted to preface with the fact that normally speaking on YouTube, y'all guys would get a cut up version of the album review just so you can kind of get the general sense of the reaction and my and the, the highs and lows. And then I give you my thoughts about each song. That's normally how they go. That's why the reviews clock in at about a 30 to 45 minute review length. This one is almost double because of the fact that as we were listening on Twitch, I told the Twitch audience, I was like, I don't I don't know if there's going to be a way that I can cut this up and everything and get my point across like normal because the lyrics, while they are while they are core to the overall concept, the overall concept is a very surreal experience that you have to take in. So a lot of these reactions that I'm doing, I'm kind of just sitting there taking in the entire thing. It's not like there's bars for me to go, oh, shit, that's crazy line like that didn't happen that often. So every time that you're watching this, every single reaction is going to be there in full. This is normally what you would get on Patreon. That's the re that's the real reason for this intro. Guys, please consider joining on Patreon. You get full length reactions such as this over there. Um, but this album is special in the sense that like I didn't want to cut it up to because it would dilute it would it would it would totally take away from the overall vibe that I was feeling and that you would get as a reaction watcher um, if I were to cut it up. It wouldn't do the album any justice. So this type of reaction is going to be in full every single song in full every single thought of mine in full talking to chat you know getting their getting their ideas of what songs mean getting their input from quadeca fans um because this is my first album reacting to him just want to say that this is a very lengthy video but you get the full album experience and you get every single thought of mine in the process but other than that guys like i said please do join us on patreon it supports the channel it's the only way that i get paid this is my full-time job um, and this is the type of content you can expect over there, along with hella other reactions. There's probably like 150, 200 videos on Patreon that will never see the light of day on YouTube from all kinds of genres. And also, please consider joining us over on Twitch. Twitch is where you get to be part of the content. You get to have your voice heard. We get to kind of collaborate. And then you can watch it back on YouTube and be like, hey, I was there for that. You know what I mean? But other than that. That's the intro. I appreciate y'all guys watching and tuning in. Like I said, all timestamps are in below. So if you have to stop and then come back, you you can kind of remember where you're at song wise in the album. But I hope y'all guys enjoy. Catch y'all on the next video. Uh, say what's up to YouTube. Say what's up to Patreon. Patreon's gonna see this reaction in full. I'm not gonna cut it whatsoever, and YouTube's gonna be cut up. Um, so just be ready for that. One, two, three, action. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, we're finally reacting to Quad Deca's album. I didn't mean to haunt you full album movie. Uh, this is my first Quad Deca album ever. I've heard a couple of singles. I heard Sisyphus. I heard all the all the ones that came out most recently, the lead singles to this album. Uh, but this is my first time actually partaking in a full album experience front to back. And this movie that accompanies it, everybody was saying that we got to add this in there. So uh, that's what we're doing. As y'all guys can see, we are doing this live in front of a chat on Twitch, as we always do. If y'all guys want to be part of the content, y'all guys want to give your opinion and see yourself in the future when you see it on YouTube, consider joining us over on Twitch. Also, this reaction for sake of time is going to be cut up. So if y'all guys want to see the full reaction, like front to back, consider joining Patreon. You get all album reactions in their raw form uh, for five bucks a month on Patreon. So if y'all guys want to support me, uh, consider doing it over there without further ado we got quad deca come home the kids miss you just kidding i didn't mean to haunt you full album movie let's get it am i gonna be able to tell when songs end you know what i mean obi-wan Holy shit. Is that Skywalker? Stop making jokes. Just listen. Is 
There's a lot of hype around this right now. He said even Fantano liked it. Production's insane. Bro, the production... The production is going dumb already. Like, it's just so... not. I mean, I guess it's atmospheric. Obviously, the intro was atmospheric, but I guess it's like there's so much to listen to. There's, like, distortion on his voice. It sounds like it's peaking. Like, there's static at the very top of his voice, floating left to right, different styles of, of distortion. It's nice. Hey. Those drums coming in super nice. I will say, someone in chat earlier said it, YouTube, that Quadeca sometimes sacrifices his clarity of his voice for the overall vibe and atmosphere of the track. And I already hear it happening. Like right in that last two bars, didn't didn't hear a word he said. Couldn't make out a single word. Saying that to say that we're here for the vibes. The echo out of the reverb. Is he self-produced? Who produced this album? Who mixed and mastered it? That's the that's a good that's a big question. He does everything on his own. We can't be the only ones who feel like there's clarity sacrifice for the vibe, right? We can't be the only ones that think that. Like, that's got to be a known thing. I feel like I'm running in my dream away from a monster. What do you know? He's running in the video. Are we on a different song or are we in the same song? Do all the songs flow together? Like just one long continuous track? All right, y'all let me know when we switch songs. I will say the vibe of the song matches 100% the vibe of this video. Oh, it blacks out when it changes? Okay. The vibe of this video, it's like abstract, kind of surreal experience, you know what I mean? Zoom in. Go inside, motherfucker. You're letting, you're letting all the heat out. I'd get my ass beat if I did this right here. You think that heat's free? Uh, first track, intro track. A good vibe setter. Like, it's a good, it sets the tone for the album. I've already heard the lead singles, so I know that it matches the lead singles, but obviously, 
This is very intro-y outside of like the album's context. I don't know how much replay value that has in shuffle. I don't know about y'all, but when I listen to albums, when I listen to albums, I listen to them in full like three or four times before I start breaking them up front to back. So in album context, this is probably going to make a perfect intro. But after that, probably won't be listening to that track too much. It's rare that first, I don't know if it's rare, but it's an intentional thing when people make the first track like an actual banger. You know, but artists like that are in this abstract R&B space like him, like Joji, like uh, Deb Never, like artists like that. I feel like always the first track is like a tone setter for the album. It's rare. Uh, so I like when it starts out at this pace, but solid track. Let's keep going. This looks like something Bo Burnham would have done right here. What's the deal? Ooh, y'all hear that little stutter in the production? That was nice. Ooh, love that shit. It makes me feel like that type of shit makes me feel like if we get lost in the soundscape of the song, like that little stutter reminds us that we're dreaming. Like this is not reality. Like this sounds serene and peaceful, but the reality is that there's something darker underneath type shit. Okay, okay, I thought we were gonna stay dreamy. I didn't know we were gonna get like structure to the song. Whenever there's no drums, when it's just synths, like I can keep the tempo, but I, I don't feel structured. I don't feel like the skeleton of the song underneath. Now I feel like there's a skeleton here. feels very like Shutter Island type shit. You know what I mean? I don't know why it sounds like it could be the visuals that give me very like cold Shutter Island vibes. It's obviously the the color grading on the video. It's there's no warmth in there at all. And the song sounds like there's no warmth either. Crazy he was a YouTube rapper. Punchline was me.
bro. It's just the vibe. Kind of reminds me of Brackets. Is it Brackets or Brackets? You know who I'm talking about? It kind of has that same style of like electronic abstract. Something you listen to only once? It's definitely like a certain mood type music. This music video is very Bo Burnham though. Oh shit! Bro, the left, the, like topping out, so like the point of distortion on the volume. It reminds me of uh, Billie Eilish's song. That well, the most recent one that has like a rock transition. The way it like tops out, like it just like it starts clipping. This is solid, bro. That shit was hard. That was hard. Uh, it's an easier listen than the first than the first intro track. Uh, that one actually has structure and the lyrics are like not so hard to pick out. The first track is like it was so it was so distorted in his voice and his voice was so in the back of the track that without reading the lyrics, it's hard to like understand what he's saying. This one has more typical song structure. Uh, happier than ever. Yes, that's the track I'm thinking of. Happier than ever. Uh, I don't talk shit about you on the like that track reminds me of this. I don't know the names of these songs, so y'all got to tell me because it doesn't say it on the screen. But yes, this is very like, it's surreal. It's, I keep on saying it, it's surreal, it's cold, it's uninviting. The music video makes me feel like lonely and like at, there's a war going on in my mind or his mind. Like if I were in that position, that's gotta be what it feels like. This is the visual representation of whatever turmoil he has inside. Don't Mind Me, song three. Where was this shot? Like these, this scenery is fire. Do you think it's just him out there alone? Or do you think he has like a crew with him? Maybe not a huge crew, but just someone working the camera. Bro, the echo. location scout this one like where do you find this where do you find this lake just google earth it or what just google search dilapidated building center of lake and see what pops up disheveled structure in the woods mountainside uh oh. That goes crazy right there. Souvenir version of me. Yeah. 
I do I will agree that like unless you know the lyrics already, if you're trying to listen and watch, even if you're just trying to listen without the visuals, it's probably the production is so layered and it's so like there's so much going on and the distortion on his voice makes his makes the lyrics kind of difficult to understand. That's what someone was saying earlier, that the clarity is sacrificed for the overall aesthetic of the sound, which I guess I don't mind. It just means that I actually have to look the lyrics up um, versus just understanding them all like out the gate. Yeah, definitely the opposite. They're both abstract in sound, like abstract R&B. These dogs in the foreground, it's like so lucky. They say cold nights and anesthesia somewhere in between. This song, this album is sad, right? That's what I'm saying. Those that like the luck that those dogs are gonna come and fight right there to like add another visual, like to add something to the visuals, another like another piece that where your eye can go. Like once those dogs came in frame, I forgot he was standing out there, so it made him feel even more alone. The violin is nice. Very dark album. The lyrics probably are stupid dark. Fire, bro. This is a fire ass shot right here. Hard. He said opening boxes looking for closure. It's a bar. Bro, I love this style of production when like they're singing on top of each other. At least in this production, like one 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 thought is in one ear and then the other thought is in the other ear and they're not stacking on top. It's like one speaks and then the other one speaks. That shit is hard. There's a technical name for it whenever you, it's like a it's like a call and response type thing. I don't know what the name is. I used to know when I would like when I studied music, but I don't I forgot what the name is, but there's something for that. Whenever there's like a melody that like that travels behind the original, like the original melody goes and then something's falling behind it. Lost 40 pounds. This is a crazy outro. Mm. It sounds like really high pitched wind chimes. This album is like an experience, right? I'm mad impressed. I'm mad impressed at the fact that he is doing a lot of this on his own. Uh, if not most of it, if not all of it, outside of like a cameraman. Uh, bro. 
it's got me in a certain like I feel like I'm in a certain mood now because of this. I'm not sad. Is ethereal a word? Does that does that word make sense right there? It's definitely like uncomfortable, melancholic maybe. I'm not sad like damn, I feel sad for him. I feel depressed. And if he is the ghost that's haunting people, are these songs are these songs the people talking to him? Because that song was talking about going through opening boxes looking for closure. Ethereal. Okay, ethereal is perfect then. Uh, so it's like that song right there, if you, you can listen to it from his point of view, like as the person who's the ghost, or you can listen to it as the other person's point of view and he's watching them. It's like when we're in Among Us and you're dead, you can still float and see and talk to everybody, but they can't see you. Yeah, this is just a weird feeling. Google search analytics going wild with people searching ethereal. Why are people that are on, why are 48 people looking up the word ethereal at the same time right now? Uh, that's why he said, did you cancel my Hulu subscription? Damn. Fuck. You know what? I'm going to pull the lyrics up. Like, only because I want to like know what these things say. Don't mind me, I'm somewhere in between. Close my eye, closed eyes in a dream. Damn, that, even that's heavy, bro. Comb through the pictures, search and seizure. I'm somewhere in between a coma and some anesthesia. Open boxes, looking for closure. You point to the sky. If only you knew I'm so much closer. Yeah, it's all right. I'm right by your side, just over your shoulder. I came here to handle my business, to dust off the sofa. Bro, this is definitely from the ghost point of view, right? Like, you point to the sky, you like look up, but I'm actually right here. That's crazy. Have you canceled my Hulu subscription? You opened my drawer and went through some more, some letters, a few pictures. You made a collage souvenir versions of me, bro. The souvenir versions of me is so sad. And now that I'm actually hearing or looking at this curated, perfect and neat, rebuilt the memories, reset the words that I speak, reborn through the dirt and the weeds from formaldehyde. Maybe you don't have to cry like, like formaldehyde preserving the body, preserving the memory through the souvenir version of him, the collage. Get the scraps, piece me back to life, ignore the static, getting more erratic, close up the boxes and put that shit up in the attic, running out of space. I don't know where I went. I don't know where I went. Left for some air, tied to the wind, out through a vent, bro. Left for some air, tied to the wind because I'm a ghost. I'm no longer tied to the earth. Went out through a vent. Holy shit. Crazy lyricism. Man, that song, that's one of those songs where like you just stop. You stop what you're doing. You turn down the radio after because you're like, damn, it's like another level of sad. All right, here we go. Picking up hands, song four. That's a gorgeous shot, bro. The moon. It sounds like he's haunt like this is haunting, bro. Fire ass shot right there, bro. That could have been the album cover. Same carpet, I crawled in. Same bucket, I was washed in. I gave all the time to it. I was trying to figure out the faucets. Tall marks on the world charts. It's wrong parts getting longer. I was staying so far away. I don't want to go. Day I. Same as keep carrying me. I need you there with me. I need you just now. I looked up and down, didn't want to make a sound. I was so far away. 
away. I don't wanna go another day. Trace back the ground, flip the place and head around. Try to call, but the dog runs away from me now. I try to call, but the dog runs away from me now. I was trying to get these feelings out of sound paralyzed. Same old tree, see the dog peeking through the blinds. I can do it how I used to climb. Grab it, even get it used to mine. Say fuck it, I was watching it. I gave all the time to it. I was trying to figure out the buses. Tall marks on the wall charts. It's a wrong parts getting longer. I was standing so far away. I don't want to go another day. Same basket you're carrying me. I need you. Bear with me. I need you. Just down the hall. The soundscape is amazing. I don't even like want to pause it or talk. That's how emotionally attached I am. Oh no, yeah, for sure, I got that one, Ghost. They do say that dogs can sense, like, things from the other side. That's why he said the dog doesn't even come to me now when I fall. So it's like the dog in the video was the only one that can see him. Like the dog is playing fetch with a ghost. It's beautiful, Big Ben. Y'all know where this was shot? Iceland? Doesn't look like the United States, that's for sure. Iceland and Norway. I'm assuming this is a new song. Oh man. Uh, what was that? Picking up hands. It's that room. It's that wall. It's the posters and all. And the lamp that was still swinging its cord. It's a shadowy weight in the footsteps I take. Make a mark through the dust on the floor. And I saw my mother's eyes for the second time. Is his mom, did it like, is his actual IRL mom not the storyline? Is it, is, did she pass in real life? Because I feel like if we're talking about seeing my mother's eyes for the second time is like okay i'm meeting my mom again after she passed like i am now with her to be able to see her eyes for the second time same carpet i crawled in same bucket i was washed in i gave all that time to you i was trying to figure out the faucets tom marks on the wall charts it's the wrong parts getting longer like like literally making marks as you grow up i assume i was standing so far away i don't want to go another day i same basket you carried me i just need you there with me i need you to just down the hall sad bro it's like it's literally like we're in the point of view of someone who is still on earth from someone else who has passed and this person is talking to that person like all the memories that are associated i need you down the hall and you're not there anymore you know tall marks on the wall charts i look up and down didn't want to make a sound I'm so far away i don't want to go another day i trace back the ground flip my placemat around try to call but the dog runs away from me now quad is revisiting his family home and the memories from growing up there, specifically this line, Quadeca tries to call the, for the family dog, though it is widely believed that dogs can see supernatural beings and ghosts, hence why the dog runs from him now. That's what I thought. That's crazy. This, uh, this album is sad, bro. Holy shit, these lyrics. This might be more sad. This might be one of the saddest albums that I've heard ever. This is heavy, bro. Like, this is heavy on a whole nother level of heavy. Heavy, bro. 
You know what this reminds me of? Y'all seen what's that? What's that movie? That Christmas movie where the guy's like, "I wish I was dead," or "I wish I was never born," or whatever. And then they go back and see the life, like from like they're looking down on life without the person. That's what this reminds me of. Is that Miracle on Thirty First Street, Ninety Ninth Street? Is that the is that the movie? It feels like the Sixth Sense. Like we're we're there, but nobody can see us, and all we can see them is being sad that the fact that we're not there, but we are there, but they can't they can't talk to us. Sad as fuck. Holy shit. All right, let's keep going. That made perfect sense until you say them out loud. I was a boy yesterday. Oh, we heard this song already, right? Yeah, we've heard this song. This is what. Yeah, this is this is one of the lead singles, right? This is a good lead single because it's like the whole album up until now, this is the first song where there's like a traditional song structure. It sounds like a normal song, but with some of the abstract elements that we've heard so far, the other songs are not lead single appropriate. Like if you're brand new to Quadeca and you hear one of the other songs first, it's not in a traditional song structure. You'd be like, what the fuck is happening? This is the video where I compared him to Joji and everybody in my comments was like, dude, he's not Joji. And I was like, I'm not saying he is, motherfucker. I'm saying that they have similar come ups from YouTube. Not to mention their sounds are similar. Abstract r and I didn't hear. Did I hear track two already, Extreme? Tell me a joke. I don't remember if that's the I don't remember if we had heard that one. I think we heard it on stream, but I didn't make a video for it. Yeah, I got some grief in the comment section for this one. The problem is the people on YouTube don't know what I mean. And the people on watching this like live do know what I mean. Because y'all are here all the time. Wait, did I miss the fade again? My brother was trying to log into my Google TV <laughs> and it was like telling me, is this you? Hard. Hard. The distortion like the on the 808 for it to sound like it's I remember that the and then the static hit Hard, bro. I was a boy yesterday. I wasn't born. I wasn't born anyway. I was born yesterday. I think I got
feel like the songs are short in terms of lyricism, but the lyrics that are there pack a punch. And then the rest of the song is just like this ghostly atmosphere. You know, this is like a seven minute song of just, and the lyrics are like, might have eight bars total. Guys, I'm selling my house. I'm getting one of these houses. It's not that the, there's not a lot of lyrics. It's just there's a lot of refrains. So there's a lot of lyrics that repeat. These shots are fucking gorgeous, bro. Holy shit. The visuals are insane. when he's in Iceland or wherever. This is another level. I'm assuming this is a new song. Oh man, all right, so we're halfway through the album almost. Uh, I think after this song will be exactly halfway. It's still ethereal, bro. That's the that's the main word. It's so like like the definition, intricate and delicate to the sense where it almost like is it not real? It's almost like the same level of surrealism as the show Atlanta. Atlanta is very surreal. It's when it's like such a weird concept of a show. It's a comedy, but it's a drama and it's real life, but it's not. It's kind of like this right here. This is like a combination of that. And then Bo Burnham self-directing all of his shit on Inside, but obviously much darker and much heavier. We're not gonna look at the, we're not gonna look at the lyrics on that one because we've already reacted to that song. Um, and I got nine thousand people in that comment section telling me what the lyrics are about and how I'm how I'm ass and I miss everything. Uh, and how they and how he's not like Joji as well. Uh, but yeah, man, this shit is heavy. He's only 22. This is way heavy for a 22 year old. I don't know if I'm more impressed with the creativity or like the technicality of the production, if it's all him, or am I more impressed by like the concept creativity and the song 
how everything fits together in this like I'm a ghost kind of wild wild album so far all right let's keep going what's the name of this song joji but better in my opinion uh it depends on what you're looking for like if you're looking for an entire album that sounds like this obviously this is going to be better than joji's but joji's is more commercially friendly so if you want songs that are easier to listen to like in normal rotation joji's going to be the man for me to go to that he said once in a tweet that donald glover and bo burnham are his goats adam first time chatter welcome in damn even when i'm wrong i'm right I'm good at my job, guys. I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, Joji Quadeca song together, or even like a collab album, a collab album from them two would be crazy. Y'all see that meme of like the blood in the crypt tying their tying their <laughs> tying their bandanas together and them holding them both up in unity? That's Joji's fan base and that's and that's uh, Quadeca's fan base coming together for a collab album. What's my address? Send you some humble pie. I'm allergic. <laughs> I will say while their sounds are very similar in terms of like that abstract, it almost sounds like post-apocalyptic pop R&B. Um, Quadeca's is a lot more intricate. So Quadeca's like production is so much more intricate where Joji is so minimalist on his side. So it's the same style of pop, but same style of pop, but opposite ends like North and South polarization. Like, we're not going to get a glimpse of us piano ballad on this album, I don't think. Was that the interlude? Was that the interlude right there? So that was halfway mark? It's an interlude, so I mean, there's there's no lyrics. I mean, nothing like, nothing to point out. It's just continuing the pace. This is still the interlude, continuing the pace of the sound of the album. videos from his childhood damn 22 is crazy that's wild see man it like it all sounds nice and dreamy, but then like the pitch down of the audio back into the reality of the situation. All right. Is this the next track? How settling song seven. All right, bet. If I can't understand the lyrics, if I can't understand them, I'll pull them up for the, for the feature verse. Bro, these scenes right here, these scenes right here make me want to cry. I don't know why. Like, they're beautiful, but the color grading is so so cold and so empty and it seems like dilapidation and feel so lonely shout out akon Oh, that's 
so whatever the what the fuck how, how do you even find that sound like as a producer where do you get that whatever that clap sound is i don't even know how to explain what that was sounds like static sounds like sprite going between my left and right ear on the clap sounds like mcdonald's sprite that right there whatever the fuck that is Bro, he said lace in the air with my withdraws. So you're saying that this song is written from the point of carbon monoxide, which I'm assuming killed him, or maybe it was a, maybe it was, was it a suicide? What's the situation of the storyline? I'm assuming the carbon monoxide is the reason for the death and the song is like, take me in. Now you're getting tired. It's harder to breathe type thing. Probably based on, based on the sadness of the album, I would assume suicide. been dizzy you've been tired oh he said uh he also said like you like i'm hidden behind the fridge that's hard crazy how the vibe of the song switched up whenever he came on the track you know like he's the aggressor in the track say your piece say no more now it's over Sleep, say RIP, bro. unsettling bro it's so unsettling the whole song is unsettling the whole album really is unsettling Oh, man. 
shit. I've been alone since you left me in your wake. I've been alone to reflect on my own mistakes. I've been alone since when, when you offered me your forgiveness, I was begging you not to breathe. Begging you not to breathe in, tried to yell at you from a distance. Could you tell when you let me seep in? Put my feet on the floor over each, every board, hair to crack, turning weak, turn up the heat some more. I was, it was spreading. You said it's house settling, nothing, a howl in the wind, rationalize me away if it helps. Home sweet home, I can't stay nowhere else. Cut it up in the vase on the shelf. Ashes, ashes, a place to myself. Holy shit, like the ashes of a, of the deceased. I cuddled up in the vase on the shelf, like his, bro. Cuddled up in the vase on the shelf. Such a crazy line. Lock out the pity, you've been dizzy, you've been tired, you've been busy, keeping yourself busy, let the paint dry. I feel guilty, I feel guilty, I can't say why. Words you see through the CO, was that carbon monoxide? No, you can't see, but when you smell me, we going off on a deep sleep. When you inhale me, no, you won't feel me, but we going down six feet, creep, creep to the cracks in the wall, was never there when you call, now you're trapped in the fog. Ain't trying to gas you out, but right now that's what's happening, no capping, fresh out the stove, it's all over, now it's closed caskets, you're dead to me, so rest in peace. Now you're stuck and can't leave, can't touch or feel me, but when, you, but when you're near me, fill up your chest and your eyes get teary. Say your peace now, say no more grief. It's over now, your soul will sleep, no more pain. Don't hurt no more. Lost everything you're working for. But life goes on, just not with you. Life goes on, just not with you. I'm like the air you breathe, now get away from me. Kill everything, no place for me. Said no one's safe when I touch your face. I'ma leave it cold, just how it go. You're dead to me, go to sleep. Just say to me, say RIP. Holy shit, bro. That is stupid heavy. Bro. This is the type of album where Quadeca's parents are going to be like, are you all right, son? Like, what's going on? Why did you write this? And it could just be like a writing exercise, or he could be writing it about somebody else, the perspective of somebody else. But these are definitely concerning lyrics, to say the least. All right. Next up is what? Knox? Is that what y'all said? Not? Knox Hill on the track? He lost his homie to an OD, I think. This is when your parents get concerned when you have the speakers blasting. Exactly, Imani. Or if you're the writer and like you like you took two years to intricately write this and make the production fantastic. Uh, all right, let's keep it going. Two Ernsters. Okay, a little change of pace. I feel scared. crazy how like the visuals now do not match the song you know like the visuals on this right now are not impacting me as much as they did on the slower sadder songs this would be a fire ass desktop background you know i just thought about that anyway but yeah like the visual sound seems out of place here so it's got like that disconnected feeling so while i was feeling sad before now i'm feeling like a little nervous just because it's like where is this coming from type shit Oh, 
Skater 2 to this. Bro, this track is so left field. We just took a 90 degree turn this way. Sled storm type beat. I'm telling you, a video part would go crazy. Too, it felt like. And then back into that was crazy. Now I understand why everybody's like, I can't wait till it gets to knots because that is nothing like the first six songs of the album. Was that song seven? Song eight, that was nothing like the rest of the album. Holy shit, I walk around my knots on my neck and my like open book in a closed casket. Could refer to his music in the way that everyone's able to listen to his songs and therefore his thoughts, even though he's dead in a closed casket, people to still all still all hear all of his music. That's a good interpretation of that. An open book in a closed casket. Damn, that's a pretty fire line if that's actually what he meant. Sometimes I feel like we be giving writers too much cred. I mean, that one makes sense, but that just reminds me of like a lot of the other shit that I see on Genius. I'm like, bro, ain't no fucking way that he meant what you just said. Ain't no way he knew about all five of the entendres in the one line. Knox, don't ask the question if you don't want the answer. Oh my gosh, as what, as what, ask what the news is. I become a nuisance when we tie to that knot. Tying a knot around one's neck to commit suicide, but also tying a knot and marrying the decision that you made. Walk around with knots on my neck is crazy. Like lassoing ocean waves that try to hold back tears. Bro, that's gorgeous. Not going to lie. That is a nice line right there. Just the visual that it gives you lassoing waves to hold back tears. And it's like, obviously, you can't lasso and ring. You can't, like, control a wave. So it's a pointless endeavor. It's fire. Knots in my neck and my chest pulling strings to the intersect. I had to fasten on my belt. I cut cords. If you couldn't tell, oh, I don't fade to black. I cut to static. It's a crazy line. I don't fade to black. I cut to static. That's wild. Tightrope. Try to make it back. It is acrobatic. Fire bar too. I hope you could get some luck from scratching at it. Fire. Like a scratch off. Cold room. Cold ever since the sun died. Ever since the two sides turned into one. the one side. Two-faced people only look at you through one eye. Damn bar. Too late. Seen you. Brought a rope into a gunfight. Shoelace at evil. Watch you step before you dust bite. Like you bite the dust, but he flipped it in order to make the rhyme scheme fit. Treat me like a dust mite. Thought we had enough, right? 
wild track bro i wonder if that's the track where he actually committed the suicide you know that's why it sounds different than the rest of the album like is this the track where the deed actually got done so it sounds like really it sounds jarring and it sounds quick and disturbing because it's the actual song that embodies the the moment of i guess hanging himself you know what i mean it's wild track all right next up what is this one what's the next one fantasy world
literally like fireworks, bro. Distortion is pretty heavy. I don't know about basic, but not being able to hear what he's saying is definitely. And it's not even the, just this song, like the entire album. You almost need the lyrics. Closer of a ride, bro. All of these songs ending with like that, like sound of a cassette running still is crazy. This line right here alone, cry to sleep, wait a week. Like, I don't know if he's talking to the person, like cry yourself to sleep and wait a week, you know, like definitely give time to grieve, like give yourself time to grieve, but you have to move on. Like don't move on tomorrow, but wait a week before you see what's up. I could, I'm bored. I could be so much more than I am. I need to go. I heard there's no place for me. One that nobody knows or there's a bro. One that goes away with me, so I drove mountains away to a place that ain't real. These lyrics are heavy, bro, the entire time. Like, literally committing suicide and going to the other fantasy world on the other side. Like, I heard that this place is not a place for me. This is not where I need to be. This is not the final place for me. I don't belong here. Let me go to the other side, to a place that ain't real. That's where I want to stay. Wild. That place over the hill where you dream about crossing, it's not a cry for help to rethink your options. It's your mom's bakery in Maine, that cabin in Sweden. So is that what the cabin is? Like, that's what we've been looking at the whole time? It's the going offline. It's next year I'll go vegan. It's not the woe is me. It's to hold the door open. That's a fantasy world, one that I've chosen. Bro, somewhere over the hill where you cry without speaking, leave your door slightly creaking. It's all leaking away when there's nothing to say. There's no point anymore. The words touch your mouth. And they fall to the floor. So why try to move your hair when you barely exist? That's a fantasy world. That's where I want to live. God damn. Stupid heavy, bro. This whole album. Like if you're in a certain mood that doesn't match this album. This album's going to put you in the mood that you need to be in to match the album. Like there's no way that you can. There's no way that you can power through these lyrics that are like stupid heavy. This is almost like one long ass suicide note. It's either that or it's it's like, I've already committed the deed. I'm not coming back. I hope y'all guys find a way to move on. It's not like it's not like sad because of heartbreak. You know, you can push through the lyrics by vibing to the production. Oh, for sure. That's true. I'll give you that. But 
it's not like sad like heartbreak or sad we broke up sad my parents got divorced or sad like just for the sake of being sad this is like this is the other side of depression this is almost like one long letter like i'm still with y'all but y'all need to move on because at no point in my life did i felt like i belong here on earth with y'all if you're someone who's either thinking about or even has anybody close to you that's gone through it this is gonna hit you in a different way bro gonna hit you in a different way all right two tracks left makes me think about existence as a whole oh yeah 100 percent or lack thereof like what like what happens on the other side how do you even like where do you find this setting where do you find this these like houses that are set up and are vacant when's the last time you let yourself think i might be gone if time i let myself play i wouldn't say i was surprised on the day second time when's the last time your love was unrequited i know i showed up to the party uninvited it's getting hard for me to train crossing like as the things are coming down that is pretty sick especially especially as like it builds up into the into this course it's almost like the train is crossing in that moment like passing by you She did. She was more abstract. Lana's very dreamy. This is very dreamy and uh, Another song? 
Yeah, bro. Just like there's no true white in these in this video. Everything is kind of like dulled down. The color grading definitely adds to the vibe of the song. There's no way that I mean the vibe of the visuals. Like if it wasn't color graded like this, if it was like even it could be cloudy and still not look like this. This is an intentional way of making the video look. Like if it's cloudy outside, it's almost more blue than this because the light passing through the clouds ends up getting blue. Those words don't do you justice. Those words don't do you justice. Those words don't do you justice. And then the the pull, the focus pull into the flowers. Those words don't do you justice. 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 That's good, Nick. We're just in our fields right now listening to this fucking album. Depressed, sad at life. Typical vibes. You came out of the room and you were crying in a way that nobody could hear. I stopped kicking and screaming when you turned the lights on. You woke me up. I felt naked. I felt exposed. I felt like for the first time. I was intruding on something. It's just super abstract, bro. I figured the song had switched. We're just writing it out. Like, this album is not one that. Not everybody's gonna fuck with this. You know what I mean? It's a very, like, niche style. It's gorgeous. But it's very much like James let Blake go don't let go of me. in terms of like the surrealness. And James Blake also has a very a style that not everybody can get behind. I've been trying to move past the crap and dust scratches, but that's what I am. Oh yeah, it's definitely a respectable album. Like how listenable it is is different in terms of like everyday listen. But as a as a whole, the way it's composed, the way it's arranged, the video that goes along with it, it truly is a masterpiece. It just sets like a whole. I like it, but still, Joji is more of my vibe. Tbh, and again, that's where their that's where their styles differ. Like they're both very abstract, but Joji is a lot more minimal. And this is a very heavy concept. Like the concept of this album, the suicide, 
the death, talking from the perspective of the ghost, looking in at the people who they left behind. Like that is a very structured concept. When you see it. Whereas Smithereens, let's just say by Joji, is just like love songs or like broken heart songs. Not a single song here is about a broken heart, but they're all sad as fuck. You really can't compare the two albums from the two artists. Other than the fact that they both don't sound like mainstream records. I don't even know who you would compare this to. compared to NF like you're gonna say or people are gonna say because of the darkness of the sound and because of the imagery of the video it's NF like it's not NF at all NF is very literal about this is not literal what it whatsoever everything is cryptic everything is metaphorical this person crying in the back of this right here Is it just like the end of a tape? Like we're hearing all the static and all the leftover? Considering the fact that he said that he was static or is leaving, not going away slowly, going away like static? Yeah, I don't fade to black, I cut to static. That's what I had figured. Smart way to end it. It definitely does fit the album. I don't mind this because it's fits the concept of the album. This is almost like an experimental R&B at this point. It's not even, I mean, it's abstract, it's not, but it's not like alternative R&B. It's literally... I'm assuming that the whole album is supposed to be like one long tape. That's why we're cutting to static. Just like his life cut to static. It's like gorgeously haunting, bro. The only person that I can think of that is similar in sound or even close to similar would be James Blake. James Blake is a better singer. His production is a little more, is tighter. The cuts of static is wild, bro. And it's like this for a while. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, Spin. Uh, I agree with you. It's like, as a project, it's gorgeous. But it's not a project that you're going to be able to listen to all the time. The Joji fans are going to be able to listen to it all the time. It's like KSI. It's like anybody that came up from YouTube. Not Joji. Uh, the, the Quadeca fans. Just like the KSI fans. Now like, like the Joji fans. Like they saw these dudes rise from YouTube. And they grew with them. So they like to see them on the, go on to their new endeavors. Um, so they might listen to this more often than your average person. Because this is very experimental R&B. Like at the end of the day. Yeah, it's structured. Yeah, there's like traditional sounds to it. I'm going to turn it down because it's mad loud. Uh, but yeah, it's not. It's like one of those. It's just one of those albums you listen to. You almost have to take it in as an album. You almost have to take it in as an album. I might listen to it a couple more times, like without the visuals. Hard. I might listen to it a couple of more times to, uh, without the visuals to see like how I feel about it with just the music. 
Also, like with different headphones in the car or, you know, if I had a car at the moment. How do I feel about it? It's definitely a weird rating. It's a weird rating because as a whole, like for what it's trying to accomplish, I don't know if there's anything better than it this year. It's better as a concept than Smithereens is by Joji. It seems more fleshed out. I don't know how long it, how long has he been working on this? I'm assuming minimum two years um, that he's been working on this as a whole. It's got to be like a... It's got to be like a nine for what it's trying to achieve. See, and I don't know, like, like this is where it gets hard to grade because it's just him doing everything. But it's also a nine in the sense of like it's a nine for what it is, but it's not a nine in the re in the repeat listen sense. Listening to these songs out of the context of the album is probably going to be very minimal. It's probably going to be very minimal um, how many times that I can repeat listen to this. Like if it just comes up on shuffle, this is probably not something that I'm going to listen to on its own on like song by song basis, right? Because it doesn't sound, if this comes up on shuffle at any point in, in a random like iTunes shuffle, it's, it's going to take whatever, it's going to suck all the air out of the room. Whatever the vibe is, that vibe is now gone because th like one of these songs came on. You know what I mean? It's not like you can go from this song to another artist on shuffle where the vibe is going to match. Uh, so as an album, I would probably say a nine album of the year. God, see, this is where it gets tough though. As a concept, probably album of the year. It's, it's, it, that's what I was about to say that Texas. It sounds like, it sounds like if I walked into the MoMA and looked at a Jackson Pollock or I walked into the MoMA and looked at some kind of like Jean-Michel Basquiat painting, you know, like you have to take the whole thing in at once. Like I can't look at the, I can't look at the top half of a Basquiat painting and be like, Ooh, I'm getting the full experience of this. I can't look at a corner of the Mona Lisa. And I'm not saying that this is art of that level. I'm just comparing it to fine art. Like you can't, you have to look at the entire overall picture in order to get the history behind it and understand why it hits people. So you can't listen to these songs out of context because they don't make sense out of context. But when, so like, it depends on what you're grading for when it comes to album of the year. Are you are you grading based on how much you like the album? Are you grading based off of what does the project sound like as a whole? Are you grading based off of the lyricism? Are you grading based off of how many times you're going to be able to listen in the future? Because uh, all of them are different. When you listen to them separately, it doesn't actually feel so heavy. And, I, and that's cool and all, but I want to feel the heaviness because that's the point. It's like watching, it's like watching a scary movie with the lights on, or it's like watching a scary movie without the sound. Like you put the TV on mute. Like, yeah, you can still see, you can still get the vibe and get the picture of what's happening, but you're not going to be immersed in what the feeling you should be feeling is. Exactly. I want to preserve the feeling, the meaning of the album. So in that sense, it's not a very repeat listen, but at the same time as the album, it's, a, it's damn near perfect. Would you listen to the songs from the surge by themselves? I don't, Nathan. <laughs> that's the thing. But then again, that's that's a tough comparison because I definitely get the NF comparison, um, especially with the visuals. I get the NF comparison with the heaviness, with the darkness of the lyrics. But NF songs are traditional songs. They're not concept driven. They're not they're not minimal. They're not abstract in any way. It's a literal NF songs are literal songs. This is more than just a song. This is almost like an experience as an album. So if it's in my damn top 10 songs of the top 10 albums of the year, holy shit. Oh, is it in the top 10? It's going to give me a run for my money as I'm thinking about it. I think the best way, the best review I could give the example or the songs are long, but I wouldn't cut any of them. Exactly. It's just like a movie. Like when you watch The Godfather, that hoe is three hours. But if you take out any second of it, it's like, oh, it doesn't make as much sense anymore. Or it doesn't hit as much as it did. Every second matters of the production. Even the last three minutes of static matter. The last three minutes of static matter to the album. Number one or two for you, album of the year, Axel Beck. That's a, that's a, I can understand why you would put it that high. One of the main, like if not criticisms, but things that I wish was different. So I guess a criticism, the clarity of the lyrics. It's very hard to understand sometimes. And I get that. He doesn't want the lyrics to sit on top because the lyrics are part of the overall are part of the overall painting. But as someone who listens to lyrics and our and our channel is all about lyrics, that is that, that is something that's going to play a factor into listen listenability or how many times I can re-listen. Yeah, without the this is the first time 
ever, I think, that I have pulled up lyrics. That's how that's how hard it was to understand at some points. And I can't even blame it on the I can't even blame it on the YouTube compression. That's probably what it sounds like on Spotify too. Uh the Forever Story, yes, yeah, seeing more Black Superheroes Morale, Denzel's album above it this year. Um, but I think it slides in behind those. The Forever Story for sure. Yesy for sure. More Black Superheroes. This might even be above that just because that album is mad short and there's a lot of features on it. And the feature and like the Snoop feature, I wasn't really feeling that feature. Um, Denzel's album is above this, I do believe as well. But that's because we're more on the rap side on this channel than anything else. Conce if we're talking about conceptually, this is by far the best album of the year. This is even a better concept than Jid's album. Because Jid's album is a good concept, like it's looking back on his life, the whole situation. But this is this is a whole nother level of penmanship. And to think about the fact that a lot of the songs here are hard hitting as they are. And there's only maybe like eight bars in the whole song. Some of these songs are barely have any lyrics, but the lyrics that are in there, they hit. They hit like crazy. So while the writing is not necessarily as dense, it still hits you in the emotions. It, like you, you know how you should feel listening to this album. There's no question about the, the feeling that you're supposed to have from this album. You're supposed to like have some type of existential crisis inside as you're listening. Uh, so I think it did its job. It's probably a nine for me. A nine, considering with the asterisk that it's only a nine in album form. It's not like there's it's not like there's hella nines on the album, but the album as a whole is a nine. And the other asterisk is like, it's not a nine for the replay value. It's a, it's a nine for the overall concept and the execute and the execution of it.